straight ahead on Law & Crime Daily. Taylor Swift takes to Twitter claiming her albums were sold from underneath her. But does she have a legal argument? Plus, a former cheerleader is back in court after burying her baby in her backyard. Should Skylar Richardson be taken off probation early? I suffer a lot in silence and I, I do show remorse and I am very sorry. And a former football player gets cleared of all charges. Find out how an attorney lands himself in jail. Long Crime Daily covers court cases from coast to coast. Pop star Taylor Swift is speaking out about the sale of her master recordings by her former manager. The singer had been fighting for ownership of her first six albums from her former music label. Scooter Braun reportedly sold the albums to a private equity firm for $300 million. Swift took to Twitter saying she's never been given a chance to buy her masters back. I would have to sign a document that would silence me forever before I could even have a chance to bid on my own work. My legal team said that this is absolutely not normal and they've never seen an NDA like this presented unless it was to silence an assault accuser by paying them off. Criminal defense attorney Adam Conta is here to provide analysis along with Terry Austin. Terry, this NDA seemed like there was a lot of bad blood. Did it stop Ter Swift's team from meaningfully negotiating for her? Are these even I typical? Yeah, you know what? I do think it stopped them from negotiating. And no, it's not typical. Usually you use an NDA when you want to negotiate a settlement agreement and you want to keep those terms and conditions confidential. But here, they're just trying to negotiate buying back her rights. And I think to say that you can't say anything negative about the other party is a little bit of an overreach. You do have non-disparagement agreements, but that's usually in the employment context, and that's not this case. Adam, it seemed that Taylor Swift can still re-record songs from these albums. Should she just shake it off and start recording these new songs and make some money? I think she should shake it off. Uh, Here's the problem that I have with this. She's the one being mean, I believe, on this situation. It's not normal to have an NDA in something like this, but normal people don't have millions of millions of Twitter followers and social media followers willing to attack. Scooter Braun bought rights to her songs legally. He didn't do it behind anybody's back. He did it legally. He owns them. She doesn't like that. I get that. That's tough. But when she had a problem with performing at the Grammys, she took to Twitter, went after him, and he received death threats. So I think it's totally okay in this particular situation that he would want some sort of protection from her throngs of maniacal fans looking to, to tear him to pieces. All right. An Ohio woman acquitted of murdering her newborn baby, but found guilty for improperly burying her infant in her parents' backyard goes back to court. Skylar Richardson pleaded that her probation end early. Law and Crime's Anjanette Levy shows us what happened in court. Skylar Richardson has made the long walk down this hallway with her father, Scott, many times. But this is the last time she hopes to do it, as she asked the judge in her case to terminate her probation 22 months early. I want to be able to contribute to society as much as I can and be able to prove that you made the right decision in giving me the opportunity to re go back out into the society. So again, I apologize to everyone that I've affected. One of those people is Tracy Johnson. Her son was the father of Skylar Richardson's baby girl, Annabelle. First, I want to tell you, I don't hate you. I know you probably think I do. I don't. I want you to know that from me. Richardson was found guilty of gross abuse of a corpse for burying Annabelle in her parents' backyard shortly after giving birth in their home. Richardson claimed the baby was stillborn. Johnson says Richardson has shown no remorse. So if that's the first bad thing you do, and you do it at 18 years old, and show absolutely no remorse for it, where do you go from there? She's living her best life. She's not reach out to the people whose lives she's destroyed. Richardson's probation officer said she's followed all the rules, paid all fines, is attending college and works part time for her lawyer. The now 21 year old says she suffers in silence and does show remorse for her daughter. I just want to show that I can be a normal person again. That's all. So I um, I I apologize for not showing more um, 
and I just want to make everything right again as much as I can, so I, I do apologize. After the hearing, Skylar Richardson and her attorney declined to comment, but in the hearing, Richardson said that she wants to finish college and then attend law school. In Lebanon, Ohio, I'm Ann Jeanette Levy for Law and Crime Daily. Judge Donald Oda presided over Richardson's trial and granted her request to end her three-year probation just after 14 months. The perception of this case is, uh, you know, that, you know, Ms. Richardson, that a lot of people don't agree with the verdict, think he got away with murder or whatever. That's the perception of this case, and that's sort of what carries uh, some of this. The reality of this case, though, is that this is a low-level felony. You have no prior criminal history. You are employed. You are going to college. And there is no reason for me to invest the time and resources of my probation department in supervising you. Probation is not punishment. Probation is not rehabilitation. Probation is giving you an opportunity to demonstrate why it is that the stated prison term of 12 months in prison should not be uh, imposed. Judge Oda said Richardson's action made him believe she would not commit other crimes. Terry, straight question. Was this the right decision? You know, I know many people are going to disagree with me, but I think it was the right decision. Listen, was she responsible in some shape or form for the death of her baby? Yes. But will she commit other crimes? I don't think so. She really has shown that she is rehabilitated. The fact that she's going to school, she's trying to work. I don't think that she should remain on probation. I do think we should give her an opportunity to lead the rest of her life because she's shown that she can do just that. Now, Adam, criminal defense attorney to criminal defense attorney, have you ever heard a judge describe probation that way? It's bizarre. How do we get that for our clients? I, I have no idea. I want to know how I go into court with a client uh, who is from a worse socioeconomic background, who got caught selling a bag of heroin to support his family, maybe, and go into a judge, any judge in New York City, and, and see what they say. I, I am... Befuddled, I think befuddled is the right word uh, for this situation. It's not like she had like a seven year jail sentence and she was asking to be released a little bit early. She was on probation, something that requires her probably to check in once a month for three years, not 10 years, three years. There's a, a dead baby at the heart of this case. And I understand that she was acquitted of that, but in no world can I picture a judge saying that to one of our clients in New York City uh, or 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 having this demeanor towards it. I, I get that, you know, you can argue that this is a, a waste of resources and she might not commit a crime again, but the state was not asking a lot of her to be on probation for, for 36 months. I am very surprised by this. Yeah, good decision. Just, I've never seen that before. Uh, still ahead on Law & Crime Daily, the family of a woman killed by a Texas police officer is demanding justice. And later, a defendant's words are being used against her. Erica Stefanko, ruthless killer or just a wife? We're following the murder trial of Erica Stefanko, where new evidence is adding a new twist to this love triangle. Stefanko is accused of helping her husband kill his ex, over a custody dispute. Prosecutors say Stefanko placed a fake pizza order at Domino's to lure Ashley Biggs to her death. Biggs worked as a delivery driver and was later found dead in her car in a cornfield. Christopher Cobb pled guilty to murdering Biggs and helped to implicate Stefanko. In court, the jury heard the recordings by Cobb's mother made by the defendant allegedly confessing to her involvement. Um, you know, and I get everything 
you told me to do, and I f***ing gave it up. This recording sat in a safe for four years before Sidney Cobb handed it over as evidence after Stefanko divorced her son. At trial, she asked not to have her face shown. But you felt that somehow Erica was responsible. Yes. Did you believe Erica was completely responsible for him being there or partially responsible? Partially, it took two. What prompted you to record Erica? Off and on, through, through the years, we would have issues. If she got upset about something, she would withhold the kids from us. Uh, it would be, you know, and, until we can sit down and talk, the kids aren't going to be able to come over. This happened several times. Um, we had just come back from vacation, and she wanted to meet with us, with me, to talk. And it was during this time where Chad was wanting the divorce, tool, the tools situation. I decided I was just going to record tired of always being called on the mat and always having the kids withheld from us. Seems like a little bit of animus there. Adam, a four-year-old recording that the mother-in-law breaks out after her son's divorce to the defendant. How does a defense attorney attack that at cross? Well, you know, the, the four-year-old defendant's a little bit, or the four-year-old recording is a little bit of a red herring, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an old recording, but it's still her words, and she's not denying him that it's hers. I think it's the single most damning piece of evidence in this trial. Um, what they can do, is, and which that clip didn't show, is that Cindy Cobb, the mom, she did admit that she gave, uh, she gave Erica alcohol that day that they were drinking. You can even hear Erica asking for, quote, the hard stuff. So I think what they're going to need to do is sort of try to apply an argument of, um, yeah, she said that, but it was sort of in the context she was she would, she had been drinking a lot. She felt really guilty that anything had happened to Ashley and just being with Chad involved in any way, even though she didn't know she that he was she was going to get murdered. She just felt bad for and saying she played her part. That's yeah. where I'm guessing they're going to go with it. But it's a really tough piece of evidence to overcome. Yeah, it's really damning evidence. The defense argued, Terry, that the recording was taken out of context, as Adam said, but it's still in. Is this the prosecutor's case to win now? Well, I, I agree with you. I think the prosecution is going to use that recording to their advantage and couple it with what Chad had to say. One thing I will say about Cindy or Cynthia Cobb, the mother, is she is definitely a huge supporter of her son. She actually didn't like Ashley that much based on her testimony. She didn't like Brittany, Ashley's girlfriend. And frankly, she didn't like Erica. I think she would say and do anything she possibly could to support her son. Definitely supporting her son to the end. We'll see how that plays out. When we come back, a gold-plated carry-on canceled rapper Lil Wayne's private flight. Now he's facing federal charges. Plus, no flag on the play for a former NFL player in a criminal case against him. But that's just where the case gets... The family of a woman killed by a police officer in her own home is suing the city of Fort Worth, Texas. Terry Austin has the details. Brian, a Tatiana Jefferson was shot standing in her window by Officer Aaron Dean last year. Her family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the city. They're arguing Dean failed to identify himself before drawing his weapon. Dean was responding to a wellness check of her home. The incident was captured on his body camera. He fired within seconds of seeing her and is now facing a murder charge. Rapper Lil Wayne was been charged with a federal gun offense in Miami. Authorities say the gold-plated gun was found in the rapper's luggage when he arrived in Miami on a private plane. He's accused of possessing a firearm by a convicted felon, a charge that carries a potential sentence of up to 10 years in prison. Thank you, Terry. All robbery charges have been dropped against a former New York Giants player, but the victim's attorney is now behind bars. Prosecutors in Broward County, Florida, dropped robbery charges against ex-cornerback DeAndre Baker. Baker had been accused of holding up four men at gunpoint at a Fort Lauderdale barbecue. The attorney for the alleged victims is accused of telling Baker's attorney his clients would stop cooperating with investigators and change their stories in exchange for more than $260,000 each. Baker was released from the Giants after the arrest.
Terry, the defense attorney is getting to the truth. The defense attorney getting to the truth happens all the time. But extortion charges against a defense attorney, what is he in for? You know, he's in for a lot here, Brian. I mean, the least he could get is a warning from the ethics committee. But he could also lose his license to practice. And even worse, you know, they could bring charges against him for extortion. All they'd have to show is that, you know, there was something that he obtained of value in exchange for these threats. And I think that exists here. I don't know, Adam. I'm thinking bye-bye law license for this attorney. Do you think this is a potential trial, or is this going to be a hard plea the attorney must take, considering the evidence against him? Well, it depends. Um, what the articles don't say is what exactly, uh, you know, he was, he was saying. So if he was saying, you can almost craft it in a way to say, my clients are not interested in cooperating. They are interested in having being compensated. This will have no impact on how they decide what to say or not to say. But I mean, this, I, what I'm what I'm hypothesizing is so improbable as to what actually happened. And uh, yeah, I think his law license is gone. I think he's going to get arrested. I think it'll probably be a, a, a trial because attorneys are are pretty hard up for taking pleas. But but I want to note too that this doesn't mean that uh, DeAndre Baker didn't do these, this crime. Uh, but because of this now, the charges are dismissed because the witnesses have no credibility. So it could be the greatest thing that ever happened to DeAndre Baker also. Adam, I saw a quick change of, hey, maybe the attorney's not guilty to, I don't know, two attorneys talking to themselves. It's probably going to be a guilty plea. Uh, I'd say it's going to be a tough case <laughs> anyways, but thanks for that, Adam. When we come back, COVID-19 concerns dominate a court hearing for the accused Parkland school shooter. When will Nicholas Cruz... COVID-19 concerns have stalled the highly anticipated trial of the accused Parkland High School shooter, Nicholas Cruz, in a heated hearing. Cruz is charged with murdering 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School back in 2018. But his team of public defenders wants him to be evaluated for mental competency as they work on his defense. The judge arranged for special permission with the jail so that experts could speak with him in person. But one of the attorneys says they still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement. I told you I am in constant communication with the sheriff's office about this matter. I have also told you that I have, and I am aware that we have health compromised individuals on this team. Without going into specifics or revealing strategy on this particular case, I am not in a position to tell the court which member is capable or able to go into that jail. I am, however, as an officer of the court, informing the court that with good faith, this team is not going to be exposed or expose anyone in that jail due to the fact that this court or the jail wants to have experts in the jail. The defense asked for all parties to be rapidly tested, but the jail says they don't have the capability to do that. They're already nixing the, the whole plan because they're requiring something that we don't have to provide. We don't have to rapid test our employees. Well, we're Just making a whole bunch of exceptions for Mr. Cruz's case, so perhaps we can make that exception. No, no, we're making case. exceptions for all cases regarding this. We've actually had a private attorneys reach out, also wanting their experts to come into our facility. All the, all the services are disinfected. Everybody wears masks. If you want yeah. them to wear a 95 masks, that is acceptable as well. I mean, those are standard protocol. But so um, you're basically telling us if we don't rapid test our employees, you're not doing this. The judge grew increasingly frustrated by the fact the lawyers had not reached a decision. What I'm hearing is a bunch of generalizations, and all I'm asking is that everyone please make their best efforts to see if we can do this. If we can't, and if you can't, you can't. But if you can, there's no reason to litigate this right now without knowing. I'm just asking that we try and that we specifically bring uh, specific objections or specific issues to my attention on this case. Adam, you're a practicing criminal defense attorney during the COVID times. Is everyone facing these frustrations? Yeah, everyone's facing these frustrations. Figure out a compromise, find maybe a small group of employees, get them rapidly tested. But this guy's not going out of jail anytime soon. There's no rush. Just do whatever is the safest. Terry, mental, comp uh, mental competency evaluations sorry, require extensive testing and an, eval an examination. Is it even possible considering incarceration during, during COVID? 
it is possible, Brian, because with the proper precautions like shields, masks, distancing, you know, you can definitely be evaluated in prison. And look, we're going to have to get used to operating like this post COVID-19. All right, we're going to have to figure this out because as the prosecutor is saying, we've got to move forward on this case. Adam, with all these precautions needing to happen, do you see a trial happening anytime soon? I don't see any trial happening anytime soon, no. All right, so we're going to continue to watch this case. I know, Adam, we both practice in New York. Some of the courts in New York have said no grand juries or no trials indefinitely for the rest of the year. So I'm thinking that the case of Nicholas Cruz out of Florida may be somewhat similar. Adam Conta, Terry Austin, thank you as always for joining us. Thank you for joining us here at the Long Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America.